this video, I'll be telling you why consultancy may not be a good fit for you. I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be able to know what it means to be a consultant and whether this job is a good fit for you or not. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a consultant is a person who provides expert advice professionally. Now you might tell me, dude, you're 26 years old, what expert advice can you give? And you're right, I'm no expert in no field and I barely have consultancy experience for the last two years and a half and I graduated last year. Yet, when working and representing my company at the client, we are part of a group that supports each other and together we gather expertise advice within the group that we later on communicate to the client as a team. This means that consultancy won't be for you if you don't know how to work in a team. This is quite a big no-go area of for interviewers. If you somehow mention that you don't like to work on a team or you're a lone wolf or you just don't know how the work dynamic, teams dynamic work, then recruiters will think twice whether they want you in the company or not. Even sometimes when companies do a business case or a business day and they invite students, they want to see how you perform in a group and they will assess how you position yourself, if you're a leader, if you work together as a team, if you don't know how to communicate, if you express yourself. They take all of those factors into account and later on they think whether you're a good fit for the company or not. This provides the companies with the understandable of how likable you are, how sociable, how well you perform in a group and how approachable you are as a person. Consultancy is all about working well with people. Being able to work with your colleagues is a given, but you also need to be likable from the client. Just remember that the company's profit comes from the client. If your employer is not able to sell you to the client, to allocate you as a client, or if the client doesn't like you at all, then they will remove you from the project. And this might have a severe impact on your performance. Think of it this way. A customer goes to H&M and they want to buy a t-shirt. Now later on they go to their home, they try the t-shirt and the girlfriend tells them hey it doesn't suit you or you don't like it. You go back to H&M, hey I want to change this t-shirt, I don't like it. And then H&M will give you okay sure you can get your money back or you can get another t-shirt. Now let's take this to the real world. You are the t-shirt and H&M is your company. The customer is your client and they book you, they buy you. you don't, they don't like you, you don't work well with them and they will take you back to H&M, aka your company. Then they will ask for a refund, they will ask for a different size, let's say a different person or maybe their money back. And this will have an impact on H&M and your company as they maybe in the future will decide not to go work with them again just because of that one simple scenario. If your employer has no use of your knowledge, your skills or expertise, then what is the purpose of them having you in the company? Now, consultancy won't be for you if you don't like change. Consulting is a very dynamic industry. Your team, your client, your project might change within two months, six weeks to one year time. Well, big companies have the opportunity to let you build your path at some smaller consultancy companies, you won't be able to choose if you want to work in the financial industry, if you want to work in the retail industry. So they will just allocate you wherever they can sell you. You might think, whoa, this is actually awesome. I get to experience different type of industries, different aspects of the market, the world. Yet, if you're someone that does not like change, this might not be good for you. You're working at bank A. After let's say two months, you finally adapt yourself, you understand the team culture, you understand your assignment, you understand what you need to do. And after those two months, your role at the project comes to an end. Now you're moving to company B, where they have different dynamics, different project, different schedule, different working culture. You'll have to learn to adapt quick. And sometimes you'll see yourself fighting with your colleagues for better projects, better opportunities, nicer projects, let's say. And even though this fighting might be on the health spirit, it's sometimes not. It's a cruel world out there and there's really a lot of companies where you really need to fight for the best project and they don't mind if their project is better than yours just because they screw you up. There are companies where it is widely known that if you have a better connection with the partner or managers upper higher level, then they will set you into a a better project where you'll have more exposure and this will set you for the future to get a promotion faster. Now, 
For point number three, consultancy may not be for you if you don't know how to say no. There are 2.4 million consultancy firms in the world, from which 850,000 are in the US and 850,000 are in Europe. They bring together a revenue of $180 billion a year. It may not seem much, but if consultancy was a country, they would position themselves in the position 50 countries with the highest GDP in the world. Now, why do I mention this? Let's go back to our t-shirt example. Think there are three different companies sell you the exact same t-shirt. Company A sells it for 100. Company B sells it for 95. Company C sells it for 98. Which one would you choose for? If you choose for 95, you're right. Everyone will choose for 95, right? In the end, they are the same t-shirt. Now, let's take this good consultancy. You have a problem and you want consultants to help you. In the end, the problem needs to be solved. You don't care how, you don't care who does it, you just care about the cheapest option. I'm not saying that every consultancy company offers the same and they all do different type of services, different type of methods. What I'm saying is that in order to make profits, a lot of consultancy firms need to underprice their offers in order to sell more and get more revenue at the end of the year. This will translate to you when you have to do more work. And if you don't know how to say no, if you don't know how to set boundaries of the work life that you want to have, then you will end up overworking yourself and this could lead to a lot of mental issues or struggling to have a work-life balance. Now, this will lead to point number four. If you don't like hard work, consultancy is not for you. Professionals that lack work strong ethics usually don't last long in consultancy. If you value the 40-hour work week, 8 to 5, weekends off, evenings off, then consultancy will not be for you. Given the fact that consultancy companies have to sell a lot in order to make up for higher revenues and the high level of turnover people that end up leaving and come to consultancy, there will always be a lot of work to be done. Also, there's a client usually wants something and your partner wants to satisfy the client, so they will agree to everything and in the end, the partner is not really the one doing the deliverables, but it's more about you, the consultant, who is doing those things for them. So in the end, you will end up working long hours and if you don't have a work ethic, you won't survive in consultancy. Now this leads to point number five. If you want to maintain a really good work-life balance, then consultancy, it's not for you. You need to be able to say no. Only work the necessary and work hard when you have to in order to maintain a work-life balance and not having to do extra work in the evening or the weekends or early in the morning. I don't want to brag, but since I joined consultancy, I've never worked more than two hours extra on a given day. And that's because I maintain really strong values of work-life balance and my employer also permits me to have a really good uh, work-life balance possibilities where they value how you feel and if you need to pull extra hours, they will also value that. If you would like to know how I managed to have a really good work-life balance, please leave a comment down below and let me know and I'll do a video about it later. Now, point number six. If you do not perform under pressure, then you won't succeed in consultancy. The client always demands more and the partner is always willing to give more. You'll have the problem that you'll end up working under pressure to deliver, sometimes deadline will pull up, or things need to be done pretty quickly or a last minute presentation needs to be fixed and that's when pressure comes on. Now, if you're not a creative mind, consultancy might not be for you. Consultancy slides usually follow a certain type of pattern. You have the logo of a company, the colors of your company or the client and the message needs to be. You have freedom on how you structure it and we're really good at portraying a lot of information into really small slides with really small text, yet Creativity is not an aspect that we that we can exercise a lot in consultancy. So if you're someone who is a creative mind and you would like to keep it that way, then I would suggest that you try to refrain away from consultancy and you go into doing something else. I mean, you can always start your own YouTube channel or you can always paint on the side on your free time, but if you want to work on creativity, then consultancy will not be for you. We do have creative freedom and we are able to express how we want this message and we think outside the box to solve problems and that's how we can be creative. We then need to present information in a nice and creative way also and not to make it just plain boring black or white. That's when the creativity kicks in in this job. 
Consultants are just experts in making Avavi understand the most complex information that we have the expertise on, or the knowledge at least. If you made it this far in this video, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, consultancy is not like space engineer and a lot of people can just do it without even following any studies. Consultancy is just a job and you should always choose whatever makes you happy, whether that is being an artist, being an assistant, being a doctor or being a consultant. And whatever I say in this video, if you feel identified, it doesn't mean that you might not still be a really successful consultant. This is just my opinion on how I see the world. If you're curious to see how I got my job into consulting, you can go to this video and continue your journey into my channel. I'll see you in the next one.